Hi, welcome back to The Painted Mini. My name is Travis, and today I'm gonna to talk to you about painting desert terrain, and specifically how to get a sandstone effect. Okay, a friend came to me who's doing a show in a couple of weeks that has an Egyptian desert theme, and he had some terrain, and he needed some help uh, getting their terrain painted up. So I went ahead and shot it, and I gotta say the effect came out better than I thought it would. Uh, it's sort of a sandstone effect, and make sure you watch the video all the way through because there's one crucial part where I show the critical step, and I don't actually film it for all of the blocks and all of the pieces. Uh, so make sure you catch that, because that makes all the difference. And I'll see you on the other side. It's a relatively short video. Okay, I start out with my models primed with the Zenithal highlights. Uh, you can see my Hellhound video to see a demonstration. And here I am starting with Vallejo Gold Brown. And since I'm using regular paint with an airbrush, I'm thinning it down to about one to one. Uh, with regular thinner, I don't use the flow improver. You want to ensure that you apply the coat thin enough so that the Zenithal highlights come through. You can see here this color was a bit too yellow, so here uh, in just a second you'll see I'll switch over uh, to another color. There it is, and that is a Vallejo beige, which is still very yellow, uh, but I'm just looking for an underpaint layer, so this should work. And all of this terrain was created with a 3D printer, which gives most pieces a great texture for stone. Uh, but if you look closely, you can definitely see the divots where the support structure was attached. Uh, given more time, I could fill these in, uh, but I didn't quite have enough time. I'm not too worried about it here. That was an obelisk, and now I have a statue. Looks like Napoleon may have shot the face off of it. All right, this is a little heat gun that I have to uh, speed the drying along. This one came with a hobby embossing kit, uh, and it's a great size, but I have to be careful because it can melt plastic and it can actually bubble up the paint pretty quick. So I really have to watch the distance and keep it moving. Okay, so this color I used for the underpaint layer now I'm going in with, this is Citadel Air Carrick Stone uh, over the beige in order to tone it down. It gives it a more natural color. Uh, the idea is that the underpaint layer will create a little more depth and variation to the surface for the stone. And you'll notice that I'm not being very careful. In fact, I just splattered quite a bit of paint on that from the airbrush. On the back of this chair, you can see those little divots from the structure that I was talking about. In this obelisk, you can see that I had both underpaint colors on it. Um, that's probably the only piece I had both on. So we'll see how that turns out. It's just a little slab that uh, holds a mummy on top. This is the only piece that I didn't put any underpaint layer on. And 
And there again is my very yellow wall. See here, I had some contrast paint on the head of the statue. Just kind of playing around, trying to give it some more weathering and texture. Okay, and here I actually have a slightly lighter color. This is Citadel Air Typhon Ash and I'm just kind of misting it over as a highlight. And I'm kind of spraying it the same way I do when I Zenithal highlight, just about 30 degrees downward angle. Just kind of letting it mist on down over the top surfaces. Okay, and this is an old brush I grabbed uh, to do some extra thick uh, shade work here. So this is Citadel Seraphim Sapia. Um, I still thin it down a little bit. It's probably one to one here with water. I use it, usually don't use this much shade, but here I really need to let it seep down into the cracks. So I found I had to use quite a bit and then I'll kind of go in and wipe off some of the excess. I'm not too worried about it because I'm gonna dry brush over all of this so all those flat surfaces are gonna be lightened back up and uh, anytime you use wash contrast paint uh, anything with that uh, consistency you want to make sure that the paint is completely dry before you put it on because the two do not work well together Again, I'm going to dry it really good. Uh, and just like when you use the wash, uh, I'm about to apply dry brushing. And it's the exact same thing. You got to make sure that the wash layer is completely dry before you start dry brushing. And I'm just using an off-white color here. And I just have a cheap makeup brush I use for the dry brush. This is where if you're impatient like me, the heat gun or hair dryer comes in really handy. And the only thing when I dry brush, I'm just trying to keep my strokes in line with the direction that light would, would hit. So I'm just doing downward strokes along the side. These walls are a much different texture than everything else. They're a lot smoother, uh, so I didn't use any wash on them. Uh, again, given a little more time, I'd probably go in with something to 
put a little texture on the surface. They're just super, super smooth. They do have some little raised edges here and there. So those kind of show up with a dry brush. Okay, this is important here. So first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna kind of walk back through the paints I used. So we can see that's our Vallejo uh, Gold Brown. And then next I have the, also Vallejo the Beige, which gives it that pale yellow. And then the third color that I put on this piece is that Citadel Air Carrick Stone which is sort of like uh, my mid-range color for the, all these pieces. And now this is the part that I didn't film on most of the other pieces. This is sort of the essential bit here. So what I'm actually doing is I'm loading up my airbrush with straight Argos Dunes contrast paint. And you can put contrast paint directly into an airbrush. It's the perfect consistency. It has a slightly different effect than if you brush it on. You're not letting it pool like you would with... Uh, a wash if you were applying it with a brush and it just does a really good job of sort of staining everything relatively evenly and you can see here I'm actually sweeping and tinting just the bottom of each piece and my theory is that the parts higher up would be exposed more to the wind while the areas near the base would retain more moisture um, I don't know, that's my very non-scientific explanation. But it seems to work out in the end. The other thing, uh, when working with contrast paint, I found especially, I don't know if this is more so with an airbrush, or just if it mixes with other uh, types of paint, uh, but I found that the paint continues to affect the model well after it's been applied. I've had models that look perfect, and then you leave them, you come back 30 minutes later, and it's like they're an entirely different tone or an entirely different color. Uh, even on this, the final effect wasn't apparent until a bit later. Here I'm actually going back with my highlight color. And again, from a Zenithal 30 degree angle, I'm hitting everything from the top. And that contrast paint is just kind of working with that paint and sort of tinting everything. And you'll see the effect. It, will be much more subtle when it levels out. And last step is using that dry brush. It's a Typhon Ash is the dry brush highlight color I used. All right, that was relatively quick. I'm gonna be putting out some more short videos, I think, based on painting I did for the same project soon. Um, so please like and subscribe. But what I really wanna to talk to you about, hang with me for just a minute here, this is good, is Trevor Deval is gonna be starting his season four, and that's what we were painting all this stuff for. If you haven't watched the show Me, Myself, and Die, he's got three excellent seasons where he takes somebody else's role-playing system and solo plays, uh, creating his own world, his own characters. And it is definitely the most entertaining RPG show I've ever seen, I've ever watched. Um, so give that a shot if you haven't already. The other thing he does on his channel is called the Sage's Library, where he takes and features RPG systems from his lifetime of playing RPGs and gives his thoughts. This season is special and interesting in that he's not gonna feature somebody else's game system this time. He's actually created his own. And I've gotten a glimpse under the hood and it's pretty damn cool. I think that you guys are gonna like it. So not only are we getting back to the storytelling after two years, a hiatus of his broken empires, we're also getting his own game engine. And if there's anybody who could put together a game system based on their experience, their knowledge, uh, and their attention to detail. Uh, Trevor Duvall is the guy, so go check out his channel. I'll leave a link at the end of this. Thank you so much, I appreciate it, and I'll see you next time.